Today's reading comes from Matthew's Gospel. It's from Matthew chapter 13 and verses 31 to 33, 44 to 52. It's a collection of parables. Jesus is teaching first the crowd and then the disciples about the kingdom of heaven and other things. 31. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man takes a mustard seed and sows it in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds. But when it grows up, it is the biggest of all plants. It becomes a tree so the birds come and make their nests in its branches. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A woman takes some yeast and mixes it with 40 litres of flour until the whole batch of dough rises. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man happens to find a treasure hidden in a field. He covers it up again and is so happy that he goes and sells everything he has and then goes back and buys that field. Also, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man is looking for fine pearls, and when he finds one that is unusually fine, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that pearl. Also, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Some fishermen throw their nets out in the lake and catch all kinds of fish. When the net is full, they pull it to shore and sit down to divide the fish. The good ones go into their buckets. The worthless ones are thrown away. It will be like this at the end of the age. The angels will go out and gather up the evil people from among the good and will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will cry and grind their teeth. Do you understand these things? Jesus asked them. Yes, they answered. So he replied, this means then that every teacher of the law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who takes new and old things out of his storeroom. So, we've got Matthew arranging this material in pairs. Uh, the mustard seed and the yeast are one pair. The hidden treasure and the pearl of great price are another pair. The parable of the net is very similar to the parable of the weeds, which we didn't have. That comes just before the parable of the mustard seed. This idea about going out and uh, uh, the good and the bad um, uh, existing together, but there being a um, sifting and a weeding at the end of all things. So what do we learn? Jesus is talking to the crowd about the kingdom of heaven in the first pair. And there he's talking using parables of how what might seem a tiny insignificant thing can become something so enormous. And there is a thought that, of course, that's about his own ministry and the disciples' ministry being that small, tiny thing, but it blossoming out into an enormous thing called the kingdom of heaven on earth. Um, you can use a modern analogy, perhaps of an atomic or a nuclear bomb, and talk about the tininess of an atom, which, you know, will actually bind together and explode and cause this incredible reaction that we see, this incredible destruction in this case. So it's not a happy metaphor, but you get the idea. Something small explodes into something that is just so enormous. So to take heart in that and in one's own ministry to be aware that we are part of creating something so much bigger and that everything matters. It's not about leaving it to other people, but we ourselves do our own small things, and our own proclamation, and let God do what God can do with that ministry. When he's talking to the disciples, we then have the second pair, which is about the kingdom of heaven, a man who finds uh, treasure in a field. Um, if this person has to sell everything they have to buy a field, then they're very poor indeed. So this a very poor person happens upon something amazingly wonderful. And in the, in the pearl of great price, someone who is already quite rich is actively seeking for something. And he finds something similarly so wonderful, so amazing, that he has to go away and sell everything he has in order to possess it. 
So the idea here is on whether you're rich or poor, the kingdom of heaven is a possession that is just better than anything you could possibly imagine. The grace that God has that comes to us and makes it clear that we are loved by the God who made all things is just the most amazing thing. It is something you will want to have. It is, once you've got it, your greatest possible possession. You may have had other pearls, but this one is just so much better. So we have um, an idea here about the kingdom growing from all of our actions, and we have the kingdom being something of amazing possession. So you take those two things together and you say, yes, OK, the kingdom of heaven is something that we've found out about and something we ourselves take part in creating or not. And when we have it ourselves and when others possess it, it is wonderful. So then the last parable, which couples with the parable of the weeds, the parable of the net, is then also then saying there is an urgent need to be aware that everything in your life matters. That all the things you say and do can contribute to the creation of an awareness of this most wonderful possession or not. And it is really about whether we are awake enough and alive enough to the reality of this and the truth of this that it actually does govern our lives. We sing in a song, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And that is the point. If you have an awareness of God's love for you and how transformative that is, then you, are, then you will want to devote your words and your actions to sharing that same good news with other people. It is literally good news. It is the greatest thing one can ever own. And the change that can be brought in a person's life, the comfort, the peace, the joy, the love that can be set free in a person's heart when they understand they are loved by God is so explosively different, so out of all proportions with just the few words or the prayer or the hug or the whatever it is one does with another person that can suddenly make them aware of God's love for them. Out of all proportion, but it is something which is an urgent demand upon our time. Well, a recognition, of course, of all these things, that it isn't our time at all. And the point is, of course, that our own life journey, for those of us who've discovered God, or God has discovered us, in our hearts and our souls, the idea is whether we actually do recognise that everything we have is entrusted to us by God. Our time, our talent, our wealth, our status, everything that we have, everything that we believe is ours, is entrusted to us by the God who made us and loves us. And so it is super urgent that we recognise that in every waking moment we want to be the best possible advert for God, the best possible communication tool about the good news and about the kingdom of heaven. Out of tiny things, amazing things happen. And when people discover that amazing thing, they really do understand that it is amazing. It may well be a foreign language to other people, of course. I mean, the treasure that was hidden in a field was doing nobody any good until someone stumbled upon it had no impact whatsoever. The pearl of amazing price sat in a shop until this person saw it, doing him no good at all. And so it is with the good news, and so it is with the parable of uh, the fish and indeed of the weeds. There can be 
weeds amongst good plants. There can be fish that are worthless compared to other fish that are useful and able to be eaten. The difference is simply an awareness of whether that is how to dedicate one's life, that is how to live one's life in the light and the love and the joy and the peace and the strength of the God who made all things. That's the distinction. Often, of course, the passages talk about judgment and for the people who read the Gospels, um, this idea about celestial judgment um, was a big thing uh, and very much part of, of everyone's thought. You will have your own thoughts about whether that is something that makes sense. But of course, thereby hangs the whole issue with the Gospels. None of this is about what makes sense to us. None of this is about what it, whether it's something we like or accept or feel comfortable with. The truth of the situation is that God's love is just so amazing. And to come into that awareness that it is personal and that it is for you is life's great quest. But if at the end of all things, we still haven't even heard that we never trod in that field and stumbled upon that treasure. Then I think we still meet with God. I think there is always going to be an encounter with God, whether it's in this life. And if it is in this life, then it means we can make a difference to other people. But if at the end of all things, when this life ends, then I think we will return to God anyway. And of course, then there is a chance to look upon God's face. And I can't help but feel like Thomas in the upper room that confronted with the glory of God. People are going to say, my Lord and my God, and be utterly blown away by the joy and the peace and the glory of the God who made all things, the God who loves us as special children.